What's up, everyone? All right, well, I have to say, uh, this was a little bit of a tricky day here today. I feel like we had one really good opportunity and I fumbled it. I missed it. Now, I know some of you guys said this about a trade from earlier in the week where you had one candle, like one huge candle, and if you weren't in on that candle, like that was the spot to make money. And I get it, sometimes you're not in on that candle. You were too slow to pull up the stock, you had gotten up for a second, or maybe you got in and you got out break even, and then it goes. Whatever the case is, that's what happened to me today. We had a stock that went from about $8 a share all the way up to $22 a share, but then it pretty much came right back down. So let's jump onto the charts and I'll walk you through those trades. All right, so um, you can see where I'm sitting today, $10,046.92, not bad, double the daily goal. So, you know, look, I mean, the month of October has been incredible. It's been the best month I've had in trading in quite a while. I'll do a month in review, um, you know, once these trades and everything are settled and imported into my platform and I've got my broker statement, so I can show you those as well. But um, so, you know, also given the momentum we've had in the last, uh, well, couple of weeks, today's kind of a slow day. I sat down this morning, 6.30, 7 a.m. Nothing was looking good for a trade into the 7 a.m. kind of, you know, open. Uh, we had, let's see, um, EFSH, this one up 68% right now. Moves started after hours, continued into pre-market. They recently closed an, an offering. I, you know, this is a stock that made a huge move, but then they did the offering and it came all the way back down. It was at like 12 bucks, something like that. It made this really big move here, up to 10, then all the way back down to like 40 cents a share. So kind of sad, uh, really, in a way. But anyways, so, so this one I didn't really have any interest in. Um, too cheap for me. Um, we had uh, AVTE, this one, I pulled it up and pretty much immediately noticed, mm, easy to borrow, boom. So I don't like that. No trades on AVTE. Pally, this one, easy to borrow as well. Now I did take one trade on Pally. You can see I'm up $693 on it. I'll go over that trade in a second. Um, TNON, this is another one that started the move after hours, pops up again pre-market. So right here, and you know where I took a trade? Right here to, for the break through this resistance. So this is kind of a flat top breakout. It wasn't a great trade, but it was my first trade of the day. Now this one, I had to sort of reduce expectations on it. I was like, look, this is not a stock that I'm expecting is gonna go up four or $5 a share. It's thickly traded. It's got the double top here. You know, it's kind of the back side of the big move it had uh, last month. So this is just a base hit. But I said, you know, given that it is currently 7, what time was it? 7, 7.38, and I hadn't broken the ice yet, I thought maybe at this point I should just take a base hit trade so I can get myself on the leaderboard and start to build a little bit of a cushion because maybe today we won't have any kind of really amazing setups. So I took this trade right here. I bought this pullback. So we had first pullback right here right in there, bought that pullback in at about 4.53, added at 55, added for the breakthrough 60. We got a squeeze up to 75, so it's about 25 cents a share, you know, in total from my entry up to the top of that candle. Not bad, but unfortunately it wasn't able to hold that level of 460 and it came back down. So 460 was the level that really needed to hold. I was buying the break, I was okay with it retesting, but I needed it to hold for a move up to five and it broke. So made about $1,000 on that first trade, $972, not bad. It's a winner, puts me on the leaderboard. And then I was sitting tight again. Uh, EVGN, this one also popped up on the scans. Uh, this one I noticed, I believe was also easy to borrow. Yep, easy to borrow on EVGN. So EVGN, um, AVTE, these ones are easy to borrow. And then we had a couple higher float stocks on the scans today. Root, easy to borrow. Um, ATEC, easy to borrow. So I just figured these aren't going to be clean or worth trading. Uh, so PLBY, I'm surprised that Reddit hasn't jumped on that. Um, but anyways, you know, just too cheap, floats too high. So left that one alone. Um, and then we had uh, Pally. So PALI. Uh, I have traded this one before, and I've actually made some money on it. So when this first hit the scanner, I was like, okay, 
It's a 1 million share float. It's got news, 8.30 a.m. Uh, let, you know, let's see. Um, maybe this will maybe this will work. But, you know, now as I look at the chart, I can recall it's got a number of days where it ended up closing red. So it hits the scanners and I pull up to level two and then I see it's easy to borrow. And I'm thinking that's kind of surprising for a 1 million share float. But that tells you the clearing firms have no issue letting you short it. They probably think it's going to drop. So I don't trade the first pop. It pulls back, it comes back up here, it pulls back again. And as it broke back over here, I actually took this trade right here, which ended up being a jackknife reversal. But I was able to make some money on it. I got in early enough. I took profit once it had some sellers up on the ask. So I was looking for the break through this pivot. And what I thought was, you know, we popped up, we pulled back, and I thought if we broke that pivot, you know, we'd start making our way back up here right? So we break the pivot, then there's a wall of sellers on the ask. And I thought, okay, nope, that's no good. So I sold it for $693 of profit. Okay, so now I'm two trades into the day. Um, and I'm, I'm not in, in really doing anything super impressive. And then we get AMIX. Uh, so AMIX, this one I fumbled. If you recall, I did well on this one on, was it Monday? Yeah, it was it was just on Monday, um, trading for Mexico. This this stock had news on Monday. It goes from eight dollars and it skyrockets up to thirteen. It then pulls back and then squeezes up to sixteen. It pulls back and then at the open goes all the way up to twenty one dollars a share. Incredible move. So today, all of a sudden, it's hitting the scanners, and I'm thinking, oh, AMIX. You know, I know this stock, but my initial feeling was, well it did sell off a lot. So is this just a dead cat bounce? I wasn't really sure what was going on. So it pops up here. Uh, it goes from, oh, let's see, from 1050 to 1150 to 12 to 1250 to 13. So I tried to take a starter for the break of 13. I tried to buy a thousand shares, which is a little you know, big size considering it just came from 1150, $1,500 of risk. But guess how many shares I filled? 17. I filled 17 shares. <laughs> so, so I'm like, gosh darn it. So I put out a second order. You know how many shares I filled? One. So now I'm long 18 shares at 13, like 15. So now I'm getting frustrated. So I pressed the buy button and um, chased it a little bit. I added it 1350 and I added it 14. And I got full sh full size on both of those. So now I'm in with 2,018 shares. But my average is like 1,378. It goes up to about 1,450. It squeezes up to 16. And as it goes up to 16 here, I'm thinking, okay, this thing is on fire. Like, this is incredible. Here we go. You know, another big, big move. So I added it 1,489. And I added it um, 1,589 here for the break of 16. And then all of a sudden on this candle, it hits a high of 16 and it goes all the way down to 1350. And now because I've added for the break of 15, the break of 16, my cost basis is way up here. So now all of a sudden it drops to 1350. I'm red by almost a dollar a share. And I was like, uh oh, you know, did I just make a big mistake? It bounces back up here to 16 and I took profit. I got out. So on the first trade, I made like 2,800 bucks. And I was like, that was. That was a little close. Okay, let's see what this is going to do. So it pulls back here for a second. And I ended up buying a, a dip down here. We get a squeeze back up to 16. And I made another 2500 bucks. So now I'm up 5000 on this stock. It ends up going here up to 18. Squeezes up to 21 right up here. And I didn't, I didn't expect this pop. So I totally fumbled that pop. And then I bought uh, right here. It hits a high 21 and I'm buying the first one minute pullback for the curl back up. And what happens? Rejection. So I ended up giving back everything I made on it. And uh, I went from up, uh, I guess I was up about $5,000 on the day to break even. So I lost five grand on it. And so that actually put me red um, Let's see, I was up only 96 on the day. So I was green, and this is actually before I took the trade on Pally. So I was out of order here. So I was up 972 on TNON, and I was down about 870 you know, on uh, AMIX after that rejection up here, which was, I can't remember now if it was here or here, but anyways. So 
so then I'm like, gosh darn it, you know, this thing is uh, not easy. So it sells off. I start doing some dip trades, you know, make 500 on one dip. It pulls back a little more, make a thousand on the next dip. So I ended up getting myself back to up about 1500 and then $2,000 on AMIX. And then I'm just like, you're trading the backside of the move. You're getting kind of desperate. It doesn't matter. Just leave it alone. So I left it alone. And then I got the trade on Pally. So basically coming into 9 a.m., I was up $3,700 on the day, which, you know, had me at a pretty small green day. But, you know, I, I figured, well, I kind of fumbled this. I mean, obviously it went from 10 to 21 and I really just didn't trade it well. Um, you know, I kind of just fumbled it. Well, look, that happens. So that's what happened on that one for me. And then I'm watching it here and I was thinking maybe I could take a trade over 14. And I talked myself out of it. And the reason I talked myself out of it was because I looked at it and I thought, well, you know, look at the position. I mean, we've retraced like 75% of the move, right? We go all the way up to 21, back to 12. We're well, we're well below VWAP. And, you know, Pally at this time, for what it's worth, had, you know, made this move and then reversed the entire move. Currently, it's down 23% on the day which is kind of un unbelievable. So I thought maybe today just we don't have the momentum and I just shouldn't take the risk. You know, it's a small green day. Maybe the writing's already on the wall. So then it breaks 14 and goes all the way to 1550. And I was like, gosh, darn it. Okay, so I, I had the right idea and I, you know, missed it. But it dips down here and I bought this dip. It comes back up to 1550. And I got out of that with about $1,500 of profit. So from there, I went from $3,700 on the day to $5,000 on the day. And I was like, okay, that's your daily goal. Not bad. It pulls back again. It comes back up. I get back in for the breakthrough this level. And we go all the way up to $1,650 dollar a share. So I made a couple thousand bucks on that trade. It pulls back here. Bought the dip off this ascending support line, the blue line. At the open, it squeezes back up here. And I'm like, there you go. Another $2,500. So now I'm up to $10,000 on the day. It dips down one more time and... This started getting too volatile, and I just said, you know what, I'm going to leave it alone. And then when I saw this jackknife, I was like, okay, I'm done. That's it for me. I'm not going to, I didn't trade it. I wasn't in for that move, but I just said, you know what, that's enough of that. So $10,046, and in fact, about 70, 65% of it I made between 9 a.m. and, you know, right, right here, this kind of window, which is a little later in the day to be generating the bulk of my profit, but it's just the way it was today. I feel like, I, and I said, look, I saw a bunch of traders who crushed this move, who got in and made three, four, five dollars a share on it. So I think, look, it just is the way it goes that sometimes uh, even someone with, you know, the experience that I have, you'll, you'll have a nice move, but it, it's just a little too fast and the spreads are a little too big or whatever it is. You're a little behind the ball. I was kind of like, wait, is it have news or dead cat bounce? You know, I'm not sure because um, we just had that move, but it was it sold off so hard. So I thought, I don't know. So anyways, it is what it is. Didn't trade it as well as I could have. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, I'm sitting at double my daily goal, which I think is pretty great. It's Halloween. So this is the day I get to spend, um, you know, the rest of the day with the kids. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. And I did a good job today. You know, I, I don't need to overstay my welcome. I don't need to, um, you know, grasp for straws. Today's also the last day of October. So, you know, it's been a phenomenal month. I'll be able to export um, my trades, get them imported, get the broker statement uploaded to the website. We'll do that tomorrow. So we'll be able to go over October, you know, in total. And it's definitely worth taking a close look at it because this month was amazing. And I'm so grateful for it. This month right here increased my profit on the year by let's see coming into this month i was sitting at what was it yeah around seven hundred thousand uh and so this increased my profit on the year by over 50 percent. i mean just like huge it really moved the needle in fact in fact i've made more this month than i made all of last year showing up every single day 250 trading days i made less in those 250 days combined than i made in the last you know, 20 days. It's crazy. When the market is hot, it feels just so much different. You get these huge moves. It's it just the profit comes so much easier when you've got the wind at your back. And we've had that this month. So I've seen a lot of you guys um, 
have you know post either in comments or the, in the chat room at warrior you know some really nice pnls so i love seeing that um, looking forward to seeing a bunch of you guys applying for new badges or upgrading badges uh now once you get your october statements because this is really a terrific month for a lot of traders so good work um now but you know again reminder is always trading is risky and my results aren't typical it took me a long time to get to this position but here's the thing you want to keep showing up every single day so you can build up your skill, build up your educated intuition. So when all of a sudden it flips on a dime and the market's hot, you're there ready to capitalize. You've got to strike while the iron's hot because we have these windows. And when the window is open, that's when you can really do incredibly well. But then it'll close and it could be closed for weeks. It could be closed for months. It could even be closed for years before it opens again. I mean, we've seen this happen before. Now, even when it is closed for a long stretch, I showed up every single day last year and I still made over $300,000. It was a great, it, you know, I can't, I really can't complain. This year's obviously much better, but you know, some years are going to be slow. Some years are going to be hot. You just got to keep showing up because when all of a sudden you get that big move, you know, I, I mean, this is the way I feel about it. I just, I don't want to miss it. So, um, you know, a little bit of FOMO keeps me in the market. I don't want to miss the moves, but, um, but it's for good reason. It's part of the strategy to show up every single day. So that's what I do. All right. So, um, that is, uh, now the month of October in the books, not going to take any more trades. So locking it up $10,000 on the day here today. And tomorrow is November 1st. So let's try to get November off to a good start. First day of the month on a Friday might be a little bit slower. Don't know if we'll have any, you know, big breaking news, but the market in general has been pretty strong. So I bet I bet I'll be able to find something. All right. So that's it for me. Thank you guys as always for tuning in. I'll remind you, trading is risky. My results are not typical. So please manage your risk. Take it slow. I'll see you guys here. Uh, I'll see you guys back here first thing tomorrow morning. I'll be streaming for members over at Warrior Trading. All right. See you in the morning.